The real life equivalent of Ganyu's prosperous peace is eight treasure rice, Ba Bao Fan, a rice pudding commonly served during Chinese New Year in southern China. While the in-game ingredients only show four ingredients, as the name might imply, eight treasure rice has, well, eight treasures. Each one of these ingredients symbolize a different meaning like good marriage, harmony, and auspiciousness. Nowadays, any kind of sweet fruits or nuts are used for the dish. But even older legends say that the dish is almost as old as Gan Yu. Dating back to sometime 1000 years BC, just right after the Battle of Mu Yi, which was the final battle leading to the establishment of the Zhou Dynasty. The eight treasures were meant to represent the eight scholars who contributed greatly in the war to finally capture the capital of Yin. Though, take this with a pinch of salt, as the legends also mentioned the opposing emperor riding on a god beast with a single horn, trampling countless of soldiers to death. Back to the Genshin world, the name of eight treasures is removed, and the dish symbolizes world peace. And, well, Actually, that's it. I guess real life lore is more interesting than in-game lore now. Not quite. I was determined to find out whether the name change had any lore or special meaning behind it. This ended up wasting a day of my time reading up on lore, and there's little evidence supporting my theory. But here it is anyway. The question is, why change the name and meaning of the dish at all? Why not just call this 8 treasure rice anyway? Especially since it looks exactly the same as the real life version. Does the number 8 have any special meaning in Genshin Impact? We know that there are 7 Archons each having control over one of the seven elements, each channeling the power of Celestia through a Neosis. These Neosis are shaped like chess pieces, with Ventis looking like the queen, and Zhongli is looking like a rook. But wait, removing the pawns, there are eight pieces in chess. Now here's the thing, the original Archons could also have been based on the eight immortals in Chinese mythology, with Zhongli being based on Zhongli Quan. Wow, that sure sounds like the same name. Hey, even the Chinese characters are the exact same. Zhongli Quan is said to be associated with death, and can turn stones into silver or gold. Doesn't that remind you of a certain Archon associated with the creation of currency, who is also working in a funeral parlor? The other remaining member of the original Archons, Fenty, otherwise also known as Pascal in the game, would be based on the immortal whose gender is ambiguous, Lan Caihe. And what do you know, Lan Caihe lived as a homeless street entertainer, singing philosophical songs, and was often drunk. In the official Teyvat chapter storyline preview, we also know there are 8 chapters in the game, one for each region, and the final one for the region of Kain Ria. Which is to say, there could have been 8 immortals or archons for 8 regions. What if something unspeakable happened during the Archon War? I mean, it started over at least 2600 years before present, and only drew to a conclusion 2000 years before present. With 600 and even possibly up to 1000 years, anything can happen. And whatever happened caused the unofficial 8th seat to be permanently abolished. This left the 8th region in Teva, one that should have been protected by a god powerful enough to be the 8th immortal to be godless. The godless country protected itself with the forbidden out of Kemi in the Archon War. But 1500 years after the Archon War's conclusion, that very same forbidden art would go too far beyond the realm of humanity. Without a god's supervision, that very same art would curse its people to transform into monsters. Powerless to do anything but watch without the power of the 8th element, the number 8 holds a different meaning to the survivors who witnessed everything. 8 is not an auspicious number as in real life law, but a forbidden number that represents loss. Loss of the 8th Archon, and subsequently the 8th region. As for Gan, the oldest servant of Morax, nearly 4000 years of age with signs of dementia, for one that has lived through the millennia of warring, there is nothing more to wish for other than peace and for the warring powers of the Tilin to finally go to rest. An image that can be symbolized by the resting Tilin in a dish with the name of Prosperous Peace. And that's the story behind Ganyu's dish, of why it differed in real life and in-game. But that's just a theory, a food theory. Wait, is this copyrighted? On the topic of random theories, here's one more. We know that the names of the Archons are also based on demons in Asgoretia. In demonological grimoires, Paimon's face is described as having a woman's face but using masculine pronouns. That's right, Paimon's male. The wiki lists Paimon gender as female, which I believe is based on this sin. This isn't accurate as this sin is mistranslated. In English, Paimon uses the pronoun her, but the Japanese dub uses oira, which is typically used by males. In Chinese, Paimon uses wo, which doesn't have any gender connotations. Anyway, back to our original purpose, which is to recreate the dish. But first, a disclaimer. What I made is kind of a failure. This small plate I'm using is the closest I have to recreating an in-game picture. But usually Papa Fan is birthday cake sized because it's meant to be shared. 
If you want to make a normal version like in Universal Peace, you can follow these videos which I will put in the description. Though, who knows, maybe I'm wrong and Gan Yu's version doesn't have 8 treasures and is only made with rice. The night before making a dish, soak glutinous rice, lotus seeds and red beans in water. There's no specific measurements for these ingredients, because this is going to depend on the size of your bowl that you put the dish in and how much you want. In my case, I'm using this small bowl and filling the amount of rice to halfway. That's my measurement. Chuck them in the fridge and drain the liquid the next day. Put the red beans in a pot with more than enough water to cover and boil it for one hour. At the same time, take out the bitter stems from the lotus seeds, then steam the rice and lotus seeds also for one hour. Remember to check the water levels from time to time and adjust the heat lower later so it doesn't completely dry out. While waiting, it is a good time to be chopping the walnuts, red dates and dried prunes or other ingredients you want to put into the pa pao fan. To make the patterns like in the in-game picture, I'm cutting out the shape on parchment paper and then drizzling caramel over the rice. This isn't the best solution and there are probably more elegant solutions from bakers or people with 3D printers but this is the method I'm using. For the ears and eyes of the chilin, simply peel the carrots and carve them using a knife. When the hour is over for arts and craft, turn off the heat for the steamer and while the burner is still on for the red beans, add in sugar about half the weight of the red beans you put in or to taste. The sugar will melt from the heat, so just stir until it is well dissolved. You can then put this in a the blender then strain for a smoother paste. Or if you're lazy or prefer chunky, just mash with the back of your ladle. Red bean paste is one of the more commonly found ingredients in modern day pa pao fan and I'm making a larger batch of red bean paste because it keeps well and can be used in a variety of desserts. But only about a spoon is needed for this video. You can store this in the fridge for a week. The rice is also done and I'm taking some lotus seeds aside so I can arrange it for the picture. To the rest of the rice, add in a sprinkle of sugar and vegetable oil, then mix them all together. Traditionally, we are supposed to use lard down here, but Gan Yu is vegetarian. Line the bottom of your steam proof bowl with vegetable oil, then we can start arranging. If you're making universal paste, you can arrange the ingredients at the bottom following the shape, but Gan Yu's version is a little bit more complicated. Lay down a layer of rice at the bottom, then red bean paste, another thin layer of rice, the mix of walnuts, dates and prunes, then rice to cover along with some lotus seeds by the edges. Put this in the steamer for another half hour to 45 minutes. After the 45 minutes, loosen the sides of the rice, put a plate, and flip over. Now, we're going to make a caramel to pour over the rice. I'm only using about 3 tablespoons of sugar with a splash of water, but this is generally easier with a larger batch of sugar. Turn on to medium heat. This will melt and water will start to boil away from the sugar. Be very patient down here as this changes very quickly. As the liquid gets thicker, you will start to see it turn yellowish, as in caramelizing. When it starts turning a little brown like this, shut off the heat immediately. We need to act fast here, as this is another point where I screwed up. You see, caramel crystallizes very quickly especially for this little amount. Between shifting the camera and trying to get the parchment paper to fit the exact shape, my caramel went just a little harder than I wanted. The plan was to use the parchment paper to protect some parts of the rice, then simply pour the caramel, then lift off the parchment. But at this point, the caramel was a little bit too hard. You can see these strings of caramel already forming as I am pouring, which isn't supposed to happen. This is an example from a test run when I wasn't filming and this part here was the ideal I was going for. But you might be more successful than I am if you weren't a one-man crew trying to cook and film a YouTube video. Anyway, what the heck, seems usable anyway, so let's put the ears in eyes. Originally, I wanted to use imported edible flowers but these were all out of stock. Though I also had the option of stealing random white flowers from the street greenery, I just used fake gum paste flowers instead. And we have the imperfect real life version of Gan Yu's prosperous piece. That's it for today's video. This took me a really long time to research, film, and edit, so I highly appreciate a like and sub if you enjoyed the video.